Uh, the ever-confusing OSPF area and LSA types. I remember this being a really confusing topic for me when I first learned OSPF, so I hope this micro nugget can help you out. First off, the areas. When you first begin with OSPF configuration, you are required to create area zero. Some businesses never grow beyond that. That is known as the backbone area. As the business begins to grow and you keep adding more routers, your routing table eventually gets a little unruly. Like there's too many routes in there, there's too many changes, networks going up and down, processor cycles being wa wasted, and that's why we break into multiple areas to begin with. In link state protocol, which OSPF is one, the rule is that all routers in the area have to have the same link state database. They have to know about everything. So the only way to hide some routes or to do summarization, a big routing efficiency mechanism, is to break into multiple areas. That's where the standard areas come in. Standard areas is just, hey, I want to make things more efficient. I want to put some routers over here and do summarization between these two areas. So maybe all the 10.1 networks are over here, all the 10.2 networks are over here. You, you get the point. So stub area is where you you have a area that is limited in the information it can receive. So you can see this cloud up here. What's in there? Maybe RIP routes, maybe EIGRP routes, maybe BGP routes. Who knows? It's another network. You may decide to redistribute or send those routes into your system. And at that point, they are considered external routes. A stub area says, you know what? I don't want that in my routing table because you know what? I only have one real exit point out of this. It's a fair, fairly small area. So why flood these guys with all that information when really they're all just going to go this way anyway? That's what a stub does. A stub says any external route is blocked here and replaced with a default route. So all of the routers in that stub area automatically get a default. Now Cisco stepped it up a notch and said, we're going to create a totally stub area because their logic was, well, good grief, if you're filtering these routes because you only really have one exit point anywhere or a couple exit points, smaller system, why not go all the way and lop it all off? So a totally stubby area says, I'm going to filter the external routes and the routes from these other systems and replace it all with a default route, which makes the routing table inside of that area really efficient. That leaves a not-so-stubby area, which is one of the coolest name technologies I've ever heard. A not-so-stubby area, or some people call it an NSSA, is an I grew unexpectedly sort of design. Let's say area one represents China. And in China, they brought up a partner relationship with another company that is running RIP. And you want to start sending those routes into your system. Oh man, now we're breaking the rules of the stub. We want to keep our stub factor going on because we want efficient routing tables. But the whole idea of a stub is that it will filter external routes. Well, you just brought more external routes in the system. So they say, well, let's bend the rules. That's a not so stubby area. So what it does is kind of camouflage those routes. I'll explain that in a second as it comes into the system. And once they're through the sub area, they appear as external routes. Understanding those area types helps understanding the LSA so much easier. First off, LSA. What's that? Link state advertisement. It's a router's way of communicating information in OSPF. So for example, router one's plugged into some networks. It wants to tell people about it. It's going to generate a type one LSA because it's a normal router. It's going to say, hey, everybody, I'm router one. I'm plugged into these networks. Add them to your link state database. Type two LSA is for the designated router. See, when you take a bunch of routers, plug them all into one switch, you don't want them all forming neighbor relationships fully anyway, because it becomes a big mess of updates anytime something happens. So they elect one router to be the designated router and the type 2 LSA just lets everybody know who that designated router is. Type 3 LSA is a summary LSA. That happens anytime a route goes between areas. It doesn't even have to be summarized. Isn't that kind of weird? So for instance, router 1 is plugged into the 10.1 network, 10.1.1.0 slash 24. As it moves from route, uh, area 2 into area 0, it converts from a type 1 LSA to a type 3 LSA because now everybody knows it's summarized, even though technically it may not be summarized. Type 4 LSA is the location of an ASBR. What's an ASBR? Autonomous System Boundary Router. Routers that allow you to leave your system so the routers can all find the best way there. By the way, I forgot about this. Area Border Router. These are the routers that are able to summarize between the areas. Finally, Type 5 LSA is the external LSA. This d is the routes that are coming in from outside the system. So Type 4 is, where's the ASBR? Type 5 is, here are the routes from the ASBR. Now, combine these together, stub area does not allow type 5 LSAs. 
totally stubby area, blocks completely type 3, type 4, and type 5 LSAs. Doesn't care about them. That's how it shrinks the routing table. Not so stubby area. That uses an LSA type that's not even in this list. Remember I said it kind of does a secret ninja thing and tunnels routes through the area? It uses a type 7 LSA. And all that is, think of it like one of those masks that people use in the play, you know, the big smiling Shakespeare mask. They put Shakespeare masks in front of all these type 5 LSAs coming in and they're like, no, 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 these aren't type 5 because otherwise the stub area will block them but once they make it through that system it rips off that type 7 mask and really says hey they're really type 5s that was the fastest i've ever described ospf area and lsa types i'm going to sit down now and breathe in a brown paper bag